Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we welcome a very special guest to the Produce Moms podcast, a gentleman that uh, has inspired me for, well, really since the minute I realized his work and had the opportunity to meet him. Chadwick Boyd has been someone that has elevated everything that I do at the Produce Moms um, because he is truly one of America's most phenomenal food and lifestyle experts. Uh, He is an author. He is a correspondent for some of your favorite magazines and media outlets throughout the U.S. And very interestingly, he has a show that appears before the movies in movie theaters across America called Real Food, and it's just unbelievable. So we are going to dive in to all things Chadwick Boyd, all things fresh produce, and this is going to be a fabulous episode of the Produce Moms podcast. Chadwick, welcome and thank you for being here today. Thank you. It's great to be here and great to be talking with you. Talking about my favorite thing, a produce. Produce, I know, right? Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yes, no, (laughs) Chadwick. A quick background, everyone. Chadwick and I, he he did a tour that was about two or three years ago, I believe, when you uh, were launching your, your recipe collection, Entertaining with Vegetables, and uh, you worked with William Sonoma and did live cooking demonstrations throughout the United States, and for his Midwest location, I actually was, had the pleasure of joining Chadwick in the William Sonoma kitchens in Indiana and Ohio. And um, oh my goodness, we had a great time. We were able to cook together on more, on a couple different morning shows, uh, entertained a lot of folks at William Sonoma, and we really helped everyone get this sea fruits and vegetables, specifically vegetables, with this new pizzazz and elegance that uh, truthfully Chadwick has has uh, taught me a lot about. So this is going to be a, a lot of fun to dive in. And, you know, Chadwick, ever since I started following your work, I have always enjoyed hearing your stories about forming this great passion and interest in fresh food and cooking at a very young age. I think part of it is the mom side of me and the fact that I have two young boys myself, uh, but also just your passion um, about this stage of your life. So please, if you don't mind, I'd love to start today's conversation there with you telling a little bit more about your background. Sure. Well, uh, we sure did have a lot of fun together on that tour, um, connecting with uh, hundreds of home cooks about vegetables. And that is something that I have been passionate about since I was a little kid. And, you know, my first memory, there are two memories around vegetables for me that uh, really became the catalyst for what I do today. And that is my Nana uh, used to come out of the back door of the kitchen with this enamel pan and a stainless steel knife and go into the garden. And she used to just lop off lettuce or, you know, whatever was in the garden. And at 5, 15, 5, 30, that was some, on some plates on the dinner table. And that, I, I'm not exactly sure why that was burned into my memory, but I love the fact that she essentially went shopping out into our own garden. And the garden for me growing up was what is the equivalent today of a supermarket. We always had something fresh growing and that was something that I valued and I thought was really normal. And so that, uh, it, it's where I, ha- I, I, the passion for, uh, different vegetables, uh, more than fruit, uh, began. Sure. Yeah, no, I love that. And for everyone listening today, you know, whether it's 
one of Chad Bo- Chadwick's uh, Facebook Live episodes, or if you're fortunate enough to catch him when he's doing a live cooking demonstration, you must go see him live and in person. But uh, oftentimes Chadwick will talk about his Nana while he's cooking. And I absolutely love that. I mean, we say it all the time. And Chadwick, I know you and I have spoke about this too. I mean, food really is culture. It's how so many of us in, you know, especially in America where, you know, there are so many different cultures under one roof. Um, we are, we often identify and consider our family traditions to be food. Yeah, completely. I mean, it is, for me, I'm always, I've been so fortunate to work with, for more than 20 years, the country's best chef. And I've always said that I feel like I've gone to culinary school, except I didn't have to pay the tuition. <laughs> but <laughs> my focus has always been about how do we get people at home cooking better and really appreciating, especially vegetables like I grew up doing. So that is, uh, that's what gets me up every single day. Yeah. Yeah. And you are a scholar to the culinary arts. I mean, you just had a, you just had a amazing trip to Paris when you, uh, and you attended some cooking lessons there. Um, and you are, you are always the concept of keeping yourself educated. You are a scholar to this art and, um, someone who has taught me quite a bit. So thank you for that. Well, I think it's, you know, for me, that's the, the passion along with uh, the practice what you preach. You know, I don't feel like I can be helpful to others if I'm not active out there and learning more and sharing. And the beautiful thing about food is that you can never know enough. Jacques Pepin has, uh, Julia Child knew a lot, but they didn't know everything about food and there's no, the way, no way that we can. So I try to make that an adventure and turn my curiosity into knowledge for other people. Yeah. And you've, you've been very good at that. And you have through that, um, knowledge, uh, you have become a trusted resource for the media. I mentioned at the top of the show in your introduction that you have something that's truly innovative and revolutionary really, as it relates to, uh, connecting with the masses through food. And that is with your, with your show, your, that is real food that runs before, um, full motion pictures at movie theaters across the United States. So I definitely want to talk about that, but beyond real food, um, you know, it's often that I'll get my, ma- my better homes and gardens magazine out of my mailbox and <laughs> what you know, from Chadwick Boyd in it. And, uh, <laughs> tuned in to see you on the Hallmark channel and live lifestyle, local news shows throughout the United States, all sorts of different media markets, um, social media giants, like now this food, I mean, and more. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about your background here in this space and the work that you do for various media outlets. And please tell us more about real food. Cause I think it's really well, amazing. Yeah, real food is interesting. So I, when I was a, a kid and a teenager, I was an actor. And I actually was in the Poet Society before I graduated high school. And what's interesting is at the time, I was more interested in the arts versus the culinary arts and food. So as I got older after college in my late 20s, food became my spark and my passion. I discovered that and married that with storytelling. And suddenly I was working with uh, the morning daytime shows of CBS, the early show, and working with producers. And next thing I know, I'm behind the scenes at the Today Show and working with Food Network when there was not, nobody knew if uh, food was going to be watched. People wanted to watch it for 24 hours a day. Fast forward to today and real food is the first ever food entertainment series to be in theaters across the country because whether you are two years old or 92 years old, when we all congregate together, food is the one thing that we can agree on. And it's cool to bring in a short amount of time before people are entertained, um, a little bit of knowledge, but hopefully a lot of fun to the silver screen. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's amazing. I love what you just said there about bringing together people of all ages. It's so true. I mean, food really is the universal love language, you know? I mean, it's just every it's where it's where life happens is around food and um i you and i could have we could talk a whole podcast episode on just uh that concept right there because we are both very passionate about it so i um <laughs> I, so tell us a little more a bit more about what actually happens in real food is it just like a you know like a quick cooking demo you mentioned storytelling what can we folks have yeah, we have um, played around with it. it. You know, the beautiful thing about innovation and f content and, and entertainment is that we can play around with it. And we have done some straight on demonstrations, but we try to make it more fun because when you go to the movies and you don't know that you're going to see me on screen or have a particular mindset, right, where we want to escape, we are there with our families or loved ones or friends just to hang out and chill. So the whatever I do with food, it's got to be playful. It's got to be interesting. It's got to be modern and fresh, like what's in the conversation today. So sometimes we throw in trivia. Sometimes we do um, uh, like particular treats. So we tie it to the movies and uh, what's happening, like Oscars or Halloween and creepy, scary movies. So it's never the same. But it, it's, it's super short. It's anywhere from a, a minute and a half to three and a half minutes. And that's Perfect. the beauty of it is that it just pops up. We have a little bit of fun. You learn something. You get to your phone. Go to my Instagram or Facebook page at Chadwick Boyd and enjoy the show. Right, right. Oh, that's amazing. No, it's, it's a lot of fun following uh, along with that and experiencing it in the movie theater, y'all. You have to... Uh, seek it out. I might. I, I'm on the record for saying that I have chosen a movie uh, by finding the theater near me that is um, that's participating in real food. You know, that's that. And how many how many theaters, Chadwick? This is a this is a mind boggling number, folks. How many theaters is real food in, and how many uh, folks are you able to reach through real food? Well, last year uh, it expanded to fifteen thousand screens nationwide. So that's a lot of people. That adds up to 40 million people in a month. Mm. So if you think about uh, that, that's pretty – there's like 5 million yeah. people watch the Today Show every day. So that's eight times in one month the amount of people that watch the Today Show. Yeah, that's fantastic. It kind of trips me out a little bit. <laughs> oh. I'm so proud of you, um, and I'm so not surprised either. So this is, uh, I'm, and I, and I'm so glad that you shared those facts with me because I even, I even as someone who is following along and, and active and what you do, keep a tight pulse on your work, learn from you. I had no idea the scope of this until you until you recently shared those stats with me. So congratulations to you and everyone on your team and everyone involved at Real Food. That is amazing. Yeah, thank you very much. It, it does take a village for sure. And they're wonderful yeah. people. I'm blessed. Yeah, yeah. And so this, you are, to say that you're connected with media is like understatement of the year. Like you really are a connected, trusted resource with um, media and how then does that connection, um, how has that provided you with the opportunity to work with some of America's most iconic food brands? I mean, I really hope that you'll, you're comfortable sharing some of the work that you've done with these brands that are going, it's going to, you thought the real food numbers y'all were, uh, Mind boggling. What's really mind boggling is some of the, some of these brands that Chadwick has worked with. And, um, one thing that I, that I love. So in addition to working with these large iconic brands, Chadwick has a real passion for fresh produce. He serves on the United Fresh Produce Association Marketing and Merchandising Council. I also am on that council. Um, and he has done a very good job of, you know, despite living in New York city and being very, you know, 
having a huge amount of responsibilities as it relates to consumer mainstream media. He has done a very good job of making sure that he personally is accessible to fresh produce. So Chadwick, tell us a little bit more about the work that you do with food brands, as well as your passion about um, your passion and purpose around doing more with fresh produce. Yeah, so my my purpose every day, I stay, when I start my day, I say to my head that uh, I'm here to change the world for good through food and words. And mm-hmm. that is a simple way to um, parlay into exactly what my company does. And there are, I get a question quite a bit about Chadwick, what is it exactly that you do? Because in any given day, I can be pivoting and uh, like I'll be on HLN uh, with some watermelon here in a few days. And then I'm in uh, working with our clients at Campbell Soup Company on their 150th anniversary. Uh, And then I'm working on a magazine story that um, I'm surrounded by a ton of food that I've been uh, developing recipes for. And Mm -hmm. the crux of all of that is... that it is about how do we tell a story really well? And my commitment is to help people be better. So if it is with a Panera Bread or California Pizza Kitchen or ConAgra Foods, um, there's always a, a story to be told through food. And oftentimes those larger corporations are so large that they are distanced from food culture. So I work with a team and bring them in to help bridge that gap. But the same thing is when I am out there in the public, whether I'm doing my tour with William Sonoma and Carla Hall, or I'm writing for Rachel Ray with Every Day, it's the same thing. It's about teaching people something new, inspiring them to get connected with food. And I love being able to pivot back and forth to all of those things. Right, right. And so obviously you're a man who's been, you've dedicated your life. It is your number one passion is food. How important is fresh produce? That's a really great question. So food is the general term, right? But if we looked at, um, I haven't done this, but it would be an interesting exercise. If we looked at the recipes that I have created and stories that I have uh, worked on, I would say about 65% are tied directly with fruits and vegetables. And I can't tell you that that is something that I consciously do. It's just how I love to eat. And one of the things that is most inspiring to me and perplexing at the same time is when we walk into our grocery store, the very first thing we walk into is the produce department. And it's the largest department in the whole footprint of a grocery store. Yeah. It's also the most colorful. And I love yeah. all of the opportunity of what that affords us. Now the challenge is that most people just see fruits or vegetables, particular fruits and vegetables just one way because they've been taught that way. So for example, um apples, you slice it and you serve it with peanut butter or a stick of celery, you serve it with pimento cheese. But there are a hundred different ways that we could be eating celery or cooking and eating apples. And I love incorporating all of that into new recipes and just incorporating like one little technique. Like for example, Lori, when we were on our tour, I Mm -hmm. taught people to throw away their really dull vegetable peelers and to buy a scalpel quality vegetable peeler because you can peel broccoli, right? It makes a world of sense. Yes, I know. Yes, of course I remember that. I mean, that was, um, Charlie uh, was like, Chadwick, I'm not sure about this broccoli salad. And next thing you know, he's like, State Fair Blue Ribbon. (laughs) <laughs> I knew <it> was <laughs> <laughs> and that is what we want to do it, it's you know it it bugs me too is that we uh, most families are on a budget so if we go to the grocery store and buy a, a bundle of broccoli one of the very first things that most people do when they go home is cut off the stalks and throw it out and most people don't think about that but that's about seven it's about 50 percent of the broccoli so if you spend seven dollars on that bundle, 
you're basically throwing out three dollars and fifty cents. Sure. So when you and and the stock is the very best thing. So I'm always looking for little ways to help people see the much more value, but to play a little bit more with their produce. And that is something that I will continue to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you know, one of the recipes I, that also sticks out to me from the tour, and I believe it's in your book, um, entertaining with vegetables was, uh, that beautiful Swiss chard tart that we made. Mm. It was with the tree and, you know, because Swiss chard is one of those vegetables where same type of thing. A lot of folks cut off that stem, which is crazy because not only is it nutrient dense and tasty, it's like the most gorgeous part of the vegetable. And then, um, you know, it's, it's a green, like most people just put the, like they just saute the green or now you're, you're starting to see like, you know, salads with dark leafy greens in it. But, uh, yeah, you turned that, you turned this commonplace vegetable that people silo into one or two different preparation methods, turned it into this like showstopper centerpiece item for any dining occasion or entertaining event. Yeah. I just did that. I taught a class here at the one of the, the East coast flagship of William Sonoma last week. And I put eggs on top of it for spring gatherings. And it people blew people's minds because, you know, here in New York City, most people have smaller kitchens, but it's a really simple thing to do. And they're like, oh my gosh, I could make this. And wow, when I put this on the table and my guests come in, they're going to think that I am the super rock star <laughs> cook. And that's where I love those kind of mind blown moments. Yeah, that's how I feel when I prepare Chadwick's recipes. Um, and you know, Chadwick, you you've, I've noticed you've done a lot of, um, recipe innovation lately, you know, recently dropping new recipes and making some enhancements to your website. So definitely want to make sure that, uh, we send folks there. Talk a little bit more about where, um, people can find you online. Well, the beautiful thing, thanks to Google, is that um, <laughs> you can you can Google my name and various things will come up. Uh, delicious things, I hope. Uh, but for my website, ChadwickBoydLifestyle dot com, it is uh, where I, I haven't even said this publicly, but for listeners today, uh, we are about to launch two point of that and share a lot more content. Uh, and be more engaging with people. I, I, I miss, uh, as you know, I love to go out on the road, but I, I really um, want to connect more with people on a regular basis and to a larger audience to match you know, what we're doing with real food. So I'm really excited about that. But we have been doing some uh, campaigns every season to roll out and share recipes that uh, are tied to the season. So we're, I'm about to uh, release a, uh, a very vegetable heavy and gorgeous, but easy recipe that uses uh, Alaskan wild halibut, which I was fortunate enough to go to Alaska last year and learn all about uh, Alaska seafoods. But I caught a beautiful halibut first time ever. <laughs> and uh, oh, it's it's delicious. Uh, fish is really delicious, especially with colorful vegetables. Right. Oh, good. Well, I'm looking forward to that one. Now, anyone who loves Chadwick like I do knows that Chadwick really, I mean, he's biscuits. I mean, Chadwick <laughs> is known as, uh, you know, among his peers and followers as a real, um, I mean, superstar as it relates to biscuits, the best biscuit I've ever had were the, was, uh, one of the biscuits that Chadwick was so kind to mail me recently. Um, and if you've, it, you know, follow one of his recipes for biscuits, if you ever have a chance to, uh, go to one of his biscuit cooking demonstrations at William Sonoma, go and go fast and go early and stay late. Um, it is, I, I love how biscuits are food that is part of your personal culture and identity, Chadwick. And I really do think that 
every person that is passionate about food or passionate about, you know, even just the concept of, you know, food is how we gather. It's how we celebrate life. I really encourage all of our listeners, like, what is that one dish or what is that one food that's part of your personal passion and your personal identity? What is the food that, you know, people in your family generations from now are going to say, Oh, this was my, you know, this was my Nana's dish. Like biscuits were uncle Chadwick's thing, you know, th- that. Mm-hmm. So tell us a little bit more. I mean, just talk a minute about biscuits, please. <laughs> just a minute. <laughs> That's uh, all another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I had my great grandmother, Miss Ella, she could make biscuits. Well, she pretty much made biscuits every day and she would just take some flour, throw it down on the wooden counter and she'd pull out sour milk and a little bit of lard cut from her hand and just bring biscuits together and throw them in the oven. And that was very commonplace for me. And then as I got older, I was fortunate to be a part of the International Biscuit Festival, which was every year in in May in Knoxville, Tennessee. And through that, I got to connect every year for nine years to America's biscuit makers. And what that did was just reignite my spark for why I cared so much about this very simple food. And right, right. one of the things that I always say that I haven't met a biscuit that I haven't liked, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and fresh biscuit, not ones right. that come from a crack from a can, but Um, that, uh, over the last nine years, I've been experimenting with biscuit recipes and my love for vegetables. Uh, I found a way to incorporate all these clever, creative, fun combos, I think, of biscuits, uh, or or vegetables with biscuits that have become staples. So Carla Hall and I have share we're good friends and we share a a belief that biscuits do bring people together we actually make biscuits with strangers people we do not know because you can get to know somebody really quickly when you are getting your fingers wet in some buttermilk and some flour and and butter in a short amount of time but my biscuit she does a classic buttermilk buttermilk biscuit i do carrot sage biscuits and what's interesting about that is that moisture is not typically a biscuit's friend so when you add fruits or vegetables in it 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 adds wetness to it so you've got to work roll it in flour to wick up just enough water to roll it into the dough and then get them in the oven and i think you i sent you those carrot sage biscuits you did that's the biscuit i was talking about when i said it was the best one i've ever ate (laughs) <laughs> and those are yeah. just delicious roasted, simply roasted carrots and this beautiful right. bright pop of color, but with a little bit of honey and a little bit of sage in it. When you get them out of the oven and slather on just a little bit of butter, oh my goodness, I want one now. Yeah. I, I know I do too. And I also drizzled, I was a little sinful and drizzled a little extra honey on the top. Yum, mm. yum, yum. It was amazing. Uh, yeah, we served them at family dinner actually. Thank you for the kind gesture. It was a gift in memory of my dad who, you know, he was a fan of Chadwick's and had the opportunity to meet him. And, uh, it was so kind. And that's another thing I love about Chadwick. He understands and believes wholeheartedly and practices it. It's part of his personal identity. Food is how, you know, food is, it, it's how life happens. And, yeah. you know, when there are Sometimes when there are no words to say, when Chadwick knew that I was heartbroken over the loss of my dad, um, he mailed me biscuits and it was like the nicest day ever. It brought me, you know, to my knees, actually. I was just like, wow, so nice. And I, um, I'm thankful for that. So I, I do have to ask you one question that's a little lighthearted here. Um, what (laughs) is the fresh produce item that you love? Like you love biscuits. I think you know the answer to this question. It's very easy for me. I, I do, but our listeners don't. <laughs> I freaking love celery. I Yay! love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It is the most misunderstood vegetable, and I think it is absolutely sublime, and I use it in everything. In fact, I have for Rachel Ray Magazine, people could go to rachelraymag.com, and find my celery Gruyere drop biscuits. 
that are really easy to make, but oh my goodness, they are so good. Cook a roasted chicken and sop up the jus with those biscuits. Oh, heaven. Yum. Well, there you have it, everyone. The the illustrious Chadwick Boyd on the Produce Moms podcast. This episode has been a true joy. I encourage you all to search for Chadwick's um, you know website as well as all of his articles that he has done on various media outlets. Please check out Real Food next time you're at the theater. Uh, Chadwick, we have the tradition here. At the Produce Moms podcast, we throw the mic back to our guests for the closing word, but I can't do that without telling you thank you one last time. So thank you again for being part of today's show and truthfully just for all that you do. People like you make the world go around. Your passion is inspiring and it's contagious and I love it. It, it, it just, it is, it's everything. So keep it up and thank you. Thank you. It's been a joy to talk with you and, and share our shared passions with everyone. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to Lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a Produce Mom in you because there's a Produce Mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.